Jeff Clark is Senior Precious Metals Analyst at GoldSilver.com. He is an accomplished analyst, author, and speaker, and a globally recognized authority on precious metals. He has been following the silver market for decades. This is what he says. Well, obviously, it's a fair question. Even I said publicly, I thought silver was going to rise when inflation spiked, and it's done the exact opposite. So a little egg on my face for that. But uh, but there's a couple things going on. A lot of macro forces are aligned for it, but a couple are not. And the, those are the things that have been the barrier. The biggest one I'm sure your audience knows is the U.S. dollar and the strength of the U.S. dollar or strength of the U.S. dollar, right? Um, and, and the spike that it's had, you know, gold and silver are priced universally in, in uh, U.S. dollars. And so the higher it goes, the the, the stronger the, the barrier against them rising. And so that's that's been part of it. It all got kickstarted because of a sell everything environment, right? Real yields are changing. And the Fed most recently has been very clear in stating they're going to be very aggressive, more than I think a lot of people thought in raising rates. And that makes the mainstream uh, investor and institutional crowd outside of gold and silver that don't understand it's the real yield that impacts things. That makes them uh, you know, want to sell gold and silver because rates are going to rise and that's not good for gold and silver. So I think a combination of those factors is what's been playing into it. Um, but of course, I think that is going to change. Uh, I've documented very clearly um, that gold and silver cycle and after a down cycle, uh, next is an up cycle. So I think that's what's coming. The only thing we don't know is the timing. Look, silver's DNA is very clear. If you go back 50 plus years, you look at its price behavior, it's it's boring. It, it does nothing. It goes sideways. It's weak. Uh, and even many times when other investors at other times thought it should be rising, it didn't. It's boring, boring. And then all of a sudden, what happens? There's this, you know, sudden, almost violent spike where it just comes out of nowhere, catches many people off guard and goes on this huge run uh, on average, more than doubling uh, during those spikes. So silver's DNA is boring, boring, boom. We're obviously in the boring phase. But what I did is I went back and looked at all of those spikes and I looked at the time period between each of them and I measured them and I documented them in a report. And what I found was that those boring, boring times are measured in years. They're not measured in months. And in many of those cases, during the boring phase, it's true. There were a lot of people wondering, why isn't silver reacting? Uh, back in the 90s, back in 2000, after 9-11, um, back in even 19, uh, the mid-1970s, silver fell. And that was right after gold was um you know, became legal again to own in the U.S., inflation was soaring, and yet silver fell. So we've seen this before. Anyway, if you take out, if you average all those uh, time periods between the spikes and you take out the two bear markets, the, the real long bear markets that were in the 90s and one in the 80s, if you take those out, the average time between the spikes is two years and seven months. This, is, this has nothing to do with fundamentals. This is strictly just historical price behavior, right? Two years and seven months. When was our last spike? It, almost exactly two years ago. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. So I think 2023 could be very interesting for silver. So... To answer your question, that's the expectation. If we know that's the expectation, even though we thought silver was going to rise during inflation, uh -huh. but if the expectation is, look, there's long periods of boring, and sometimes it doesn't react to catalysts we think it should. Historically, it has not always reacted to catalysts we thought it should. If that's your expectation, you understand that, then you realize, hey, silver is not a bad investment. We need to change our expectation, look at what uh, you know is more realistic in terms of its historical price behavior. So I personally think next year could be very interesting and that's based on historical price behavior, but also some key fundamentals I think are gonna play out here uh, in the near future. Um, now retail investment demand is, is okay. It, it's reasonably strong, but it's not really dramatically rising. And the number one factor that impacts the price of silver, believe it or not, is investment demand, especially mm -hmm. for physical investment demand. And the reason is because industrial demand stays pretty constant, 
It's going to rise over time. Uh, jewelry demand stays pretty constant, you know, tends to rise over time. Yeah. Excuse me. The big thing that is uh, uh, that, that varies is investment demand. When a de- investment demand is down or low, the silver price tends not to react. When investment demand is high, silver does tend to react and go into one of these spikes. So that's a key factor. So I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is watch next year for investment demand to shift from being okay, you know, relatively average, basically. In some cases, it's weak, and to, especially ETF demand. But next year, I think that changes, and that could be, you know, a spark. So, uh, and the other issue is industrial demand. I think industrial demand. What I tried to point out in that 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 talk was that I think it's going to be greater than a lot of people think. It hasn't really kicked in yet, and solar demand is going to be dramatically higher, I think, than a lot of people realize. Uh, one example: they're already using double-sided solar panels in China, so they can capture, you know, morning sun, and then they can rotate it and capture afternoon sun. Mm. So uh, some companies are are starting to use multi-layered solar panels. So it's not just the top layer of paste that is on there, but a multi-layered one so they can capture even more power from the sun. So uh, there's a lot of things happening like that. The U.S., as you you point out, wants to green the grid too, right? So I think there's going to be a substantial jump in demand for silver for so silver for industrial reasons over the next year or two we're going to see a big jump in that coming in the next year or two so i still think uh this is you know pretty bold to say but i still think silver is probably going to be the trade of the decade uranium is going to be strong gold is going to be strong silver could potentially see one of the biggest rises it could be the next great bubble probably after uranium but i think by 2030 you know, it, it's, uh, I think you want to hold on to your silver. Let's just put it that way. So, I have bad news for you. If you're not rich by now, you're screwed. And if you're in debt, you're even double screwed. How so, you might wonder. Well, the sad truth is that you're working your whole life to make someone else rich. The mega corporations, the banks, the politicians, everyone is getting richer. They get your money. And what is even worse, they get your time. They get your life. You are not even in a rat race. You're in a financial prison. But what could a solution for you look like? Honestly, I don't know. But I know what a solution for me would look like. It's very simple. I use whatever money I have and I multiplied with 1,000. This could make my life much easier and probably yours as well. If you have $1,000 available and multiply this with 1,000, I believe that this could solve some financial issue for the one or the other. Of course, if you're ugly, you would have to multiply it with much more than 1,000. My name is Marco Stan, and this is what I decided to do. I decided to 1,000x my money. This is not a joke. I know what you may be thinking. You know, what, what, what is this guy talking about? You know, how should this work? This is not possible. Well, I made a detailed video where I laid out my plan. And some clever folks might even want to look at this plan and copy it and do exactly what I do. This is just a little hint on the side. You have two options. You leave, you forget what you have seen. You do whatever you're doing and you hope that somehow you get some other results. Good luck with that. Or you click the link below the video. You enter your email address because I'm not showing this to everybody. You at least watch my video on how I plan to 1000x my money. The choice is yours. Make the right choice. Join me. See what a different future you could have. See at least how I intend, how I plan to do the 1000x. So click on the link below, enter your email address, and I see you on the other side. Your Marco Stan.